it's Bruce Jew talented producer. More music at proaccent.com. My name is Reverend Father Sixtus Ladi Unu. I'm a priest of the Catholic Diocese of Sokoto. I work at the Provincial Office of Health, Justice, Peace, Development Commission in Kaduna. And I'm Father Stephen Ojapa, MSP, working in the Catholic Diocese of Sokoto. I'm the director for Interreligious Dialogue and Ecumenism for the Diocese. In 2019, Pope Francis and Sheikh Ahmed Al Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Egypt, Al Azaz Mosque, signed a historic document called Fratelli Tutti. This document talks about friendship and brotherhood on the 4th of February that year. This document on human fraternity speaks to the very heart and nature of our existence. The heart that knows no boundaries, no tribe, no religion, no color, no race, no rich, no poor, but only humanity. Human fraternity is a call to rekindle the very essence of our being without pretext, no lies, no oppression. It calls us to go beyond our comfort zone to shake hands, hands of friendship. Don't want it.
Well, I think it's not so much what it is in the 21st century, it's what it is since the beginning of time. Um, Fratelli Tutti raises the values that we are all brothers and sisters. Uh, but remember, uh, there was only Cain and Abel in the Garden of Eden. So um, the tensions between uh, various communities, individuals in society has always been with us. But I think what Fraternity Titi has done is that it has offered us a template, and perhaps the most coherent template so far, uh, that builds on some of the principles of the United Nations Human Rights Declaration and so on, uh, to extend the frontiers of our understanding about what we all are, that skin color, gender, state, social status, uh, orientations, uh, what we think, what we feel, uh, don't necessarily make us less human. So, it's really a celebration of the possibility that what God talked about in creation and what Jesus Christ came to represent and what many religions represent is, um, is, is, is that those, those it sets we, we have goalposts, you know, for building a very good society. And um, Fratelli Tutti draws from a rich texture of, 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 of not only scripture, but also the history of the church in insisting that the universal claims of Christianity simply means that um, what Christianity talks about is available to everybody irrespective of, as I said, social status, gender, whatever. So what we have to do and learn from Fratelli Tutti is the need for us to roll back uh, some of the uh, artificial constructs that uh, the power elite use, whether it's to exclude women or to exclude black people or to exclude poor people. Uh, those are the structures that we need to identify and try to find a way of uh, pulling them down so that all of us can build the kind of society that God envisaged. The, the ingredients are there and even without Christianity, uh, we always knew, you know, that uh, in, if you go back to our traditional societies and uh, some of the values in our societies, uh, even before the Bible, people knew what being a good neighbor was, you know, was all about. Uh, people knew what it was to, 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 to protect the vulnerable and the young. Uh, most societies had a, 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 you know, a set of values and the religion has only built on that because of its universal claim. So um, it is the, our responsibility. We don't need to get nostalgic about the past uh, by romanticizing that past because aspects of our past as human beings there are aspects of it that have been ugly. We've got no intention of going back to those, to, whether it's apartheid, whether it is Hitler in Germany, whether it is racism in America. So again, I think that what is most important is for us to identify those areas in our different civilizations, in our different denominations, in our different uh, uh, sensitivities, to identify them and see the ones we can use to build um, a much better society. I don't think, I mean, it's not so much, that we're not going, it's not going to replace the constitution. There's nothing that Fratelli Tutti talks about that is not in the Nigerian constitution. There's nothing Fratelli Tutti talks about that is not in the Holy Bible or envisaged even in the, in the Holy Quran. So it's not a question of, we can popularize it by first of all, we as Catholics. Uh, you remember the, the old Vatican documents are always addressed to men, the, Holy Father addresses them to his brother bishops, you know, to, to priests, to the religious, 
and then within Christianity. And then he always adds a phrase that says to open all men and women of goodwill. So that means that for, the document is available to everybody. Um, if you have a, a manual, for example, that teaches people how to how to drive, it doesn't matter whether you are in China, whether you are in Japan, whether you are in uh, Bakaleki, or whether you are in Sokoto. The same manual teaches you the same you know code of conduct. So the first thing we should do about fraternity duty is for us as Catholics, first of all, to imbibe the spirit, imbibe the principles, and then use them in our in our in, 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 you know, in our relationship. So this kind of initiative is wonderful, but it will be no use if we don't put it into practice. And we don't have to wait for the church to collectively decide how to put it into practice. All of us can pick out bits and pieces that we can deal with, whether they respond to different situations, whether it's in our conversation between Christians and Muslims, whether it's in our conversation between our duties, our responsibilities to, to, to one another as men, women, citizens, children, and so on and so forth. So there's enough for everybody. We've lost a sense of friendship in Nigeria. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, politics has become too toxic to, to, to help redeem our country. Uh, common brotherhood has collapsed in Nigeria. There's ground for suspicion uh, and fear and anxiety. And this is actually largely because of the inability of government, especially the situation we're in now, to wrestle with these problems. Um, so the best we can do or say is, is, to, is, to, is to make the point that, look, we must go back to the bottom of the hill and begin gradually to fix our country. And this is not something politicians will do for us. Uh, it is necessary to have the politician with the orientation towards national healing. But we as individuals can do a lot. So I think um, we're in a very bad spot, terribly bad spot. Uh, but I can only appeal to, to especially the young uh, and the rest of us to take individual responsibility. We can't wait for government to fix our country. Government cannot create brotherhood or sisterhood. All those things are our responsibilities, first as individuals, second as families, then as communities, uh, before we begin to talk about a nation. So my message is for everybody to take brotherhood and sisterhood much more seriously as it was conceived in the mind of God. And to, ad and to admit that ethnicity, uh, gender, social class, all these are human constructs and they don't derogate uh, from what God has planned for us. That is, each and every one of us is called by name, by God. And like Isaiah says, each and every one of us has their names written on, the, on God's palm. So to that extent, um, this document gives us an opportunity to celebrate our diversity. I don't want a journey full of death. I hate life full of death.